Okay, so I'm not joking when I say this. I am not proud of what I did. What I did in this story is really embarrassing, but at the same time, that is 80% of this channel. So before I get into it, make sure you guys do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I know a lot of you guys say that my stories aren't real. And to be honest, if you really want to know the truth, join me live on Kick at kick.com slash Bubba. I am live telling these stories face to face and being honest with you guys. But anyways, I'm going to jump straight into this insane story make sure you guys leave a like subscribe like i said earlier and let's just jump straight into it because this is really embarrassing yo what is going on you guys my name's bubba and welcome back to an insane story so as you guys may know i used to live in a penthouse i've mentioned it in some stories but not a lot but before i moved into the apartment that i'm in right now i ended up moving into a penthouse it was when i was blowing up on youtube and blowing up on tiktok and i thought it'd be cool to live in a penthouse to kind of you know celebrate my amazing victory at becoming a creator and by the way thank you guys so much for that opportunity obviously i owe it all to you guys and every time you press that subscribe button it's one step closer to being well cooler i guess i don't know if you think i'm cool just subscribe if you don't then please just watch the rest of the video maybe you'll think i'm cool after this i have no idea anyways like i was saying though i remember i was going on the internet finding a place to move to because i wasn't wanting to live with my parents anymore and i felt like maybe getting my own space would be a good idea i wanted to get a really cool space for myself so i remember as i was browsing on the internet i found a place for a penthouse now the penthouse was really expensive it was like over five thousand dollars a month obviously i didn't want to pay five thousand dollars a month but at the same time i thought it'd be cool to maybe check it out and kind of just see the vibes the reason i really wanted to have a penthouse by the way was because well i think we all know the creator train wrecks and how he like gambles and basically lives in a, like the best penthouse in vancouver i kind of wanted to have that same vibe even though i'm not as big as train wrecks obviously but maybe one day hopefully and i remember i ended up basically finding a penthouse that was like i said five thousand dollars a month now obviously i wasn't able to afford it but i still went to go check it out and when i went to go to see the open house or open penthouse i should say i ended up walking around and i really did not fit in a lot of people that were there were really rich people and people that were wearing like suits and stuff and me i won't lie to you i was wearing a hoodie that said devil's tango on it so obviously i did not fit in but as i was walking around i remember i ended up walking up to this nice lady and said man this penthouse is really cool huh just so i can you know not be that awkward i guess and she looks at me and says oh um are you here for the opening yeah i am oh like are your parents here oh no it's just me i'm just looking for myself oh wait i'm sorry who are you and i ended up introducing myself saying hi my name is bubba and i am just looking for a new place to move to she ended up looking at me really bizarre and and she found it really weird that I was looking at a penthouse, especially for my age. I was 19 at the time. So obviously it was a little weird to her, but she ended up looking at me saying, oh, well, like here, let me show you around. When she was showing me around, I found it weird because I thought she was a buyer until she ended up telling me, oh, um, yeah, I actually own this place. Oh, you're the landlord is what I said. And then she ended up making a joke saying, Oh, I'm actually the land queen, technically speaking. Ha ha ha, very funny. I don't know. It's something that she said that I found odd, but that wasn't the main issue. I remember as we were walking around, I ended up basically starting up a conversation about, you know, well, who I am, what I do for work and stuff. And then she ended up asking the question, wait, so you're like a full-time content creator? Yeah, is what I told her. And then she ended up telling me, oh, well, like you make like videos online? Uh, yeah, basically I just tell embarrassing stories on the internet because obviously there is no way I was going to tell her that I was the master of the devil's tango. So she looked at me really bizarre and ended up telling me, oh, okay, well, that's really cool. I guess. But then I told her, oh no, like, trust me, like in terms of income, I'm actually making a great income. And honestly, this place is really cool. She ended up telling me, oh, well, like, can we do like a credit check on you? Uh, sure. And it was getting to the point where she wanted to basically get my papers and, you know, basically do all the stuff to basically see if I can actually live and afford the place. So I remember I ended up filling out a form. Obviously it was for five grand a month and I couldn't afford it, but obviously I still did it just to see if I would get approved. And one thing led to another. I remember the same day when I went home that night, I ended up getting a phone call. I got a phone call and apparently it was the landlady or the landlord i should say calling me back saying hey bubba i just went through everything with you are you actually that big on you know youtube uh yeah at the time i only had a hundred thousand subscribers and i'm not gonna lie for a kid in vancouver it's not really common to have a big following here obviously we do have like those big creators in vancouver like linus tech tips typical gamer train wrecks but obviously like it was rare to see them around right because they're so famous and in a way i guess she saw me as well as super 
super famous. So she ended up basically talking to me saying, oh, well, like we went through your credit check and everything and we would love to have you as like, you know, our renter. Oh, is what I said. Now at this point, I knew I had to break the truth to her. So I told her, oh, well, like, you know what? Like if we can maybe meet up at the penthouse and we can talk it through, that'd be cool. She ended up saying sure. And I remember the next day I ended up actually driving over to the same penthouse that I went to literally the night before. And I basically went to go talk to her. When I entered in there, I saw that everything was really clean, really beautiful. And honestly, she was sitting on the couch waiting for me. I sat on the couch with her and I told her, Hey, so listen, like I'm gonna be honest here. Like, yes, I do make a good income, but honestly, this place is pretty expensive. Like $5,000 a month. I don't really know if I can do that. That. She ended up looking at me saying, oh, well, like, what price were you thinking would be best for you? Uh, well, to be honest, my typical range was actually around 3,500 a month is what I told her. She looked at me pretty bizarre and she said, well, like, that's not really what we're looking for. But at the same time, you are really cool. Thanks is what I told her because I didn't really know what else to say. And she ended up telling me and asking me these questions like, oh, well, like, would you take care of the place? Are you like a dirty person? How often would you be able to clean the place? Basically asking if I'm able to actually handle living by myself. But then and this is where things get really weird. Out of nowhere, she ended up telling me, oh, well, like, I'm not gonna lie. I looked at your channel and I'm really like fond of your content. You like my videos is what I said. And that's when she told me that she liked how I said Duvel's Tango. And she asked me to say it to her. I ended up saying Duvel's Tango to her and she started laughing. And basically, I guess in a way it is funny for me saying that I won't lie, but in a way she was kind of being flirtatious afterwards. And I will say this one thing led to another. She said, listen, I'll make you a deal. I'll give this place for you for one year, 3,500 for rent. If we get to do the Duvel's Tango. Tango. And at that moment, I remember I was thinking to myself, this is literally what I've seen on the Duvel's Hub. But at the same time, who else gets this golden opportunity? So I remember I ended up doing the Duvel's Tango with my landlord. And uh, yeah, I want to say the next day I got approved and I started moving into a brand new penthouse. It was actually pretty awesome. And I'm not going to lie. I lived a year in there and it was the best thing ever. I remember my landlord, she ended up coming into my place and she ended up saying to me, well, I've heard like a lot of noise complaints. So I just want to know like, what's all that noise about? And when I told her that like, you know, once in a while I have like people over and stuff, she ended up walking into my bedroom out of nowhere. And let's just say what she wanted was only something a crazy landlord would want. Yo, what is going on you guys? My name's Bubba and welcome back to another insane, but I gotta say crazy story. So today's story all starts back, I wanna say like three years ago. Now, three years ago is when I moved out of my parents' house and I decided to focus on my content and basically just full-time make videos and have my own space to do it. I always found it super awkward to record at home when my parents were like literally right above me hearing every single thing I say about all the stuff I did back then. Even at some points coming downstairs and yelling at me about how the story is way too much and how I shouldn't put it on the internet. But at the same time, like, come on guys, like I gotta tell everything to you guys. You guys are like my family. But going on with the story, I remember there was one moment in my life where I actually decided to finally move out. And when I did, I remember it was one of the most greatest things things ever. Because I remember when I got my own place, I ended up putting my gaming setup in the living room. I had whatever snacks I wanted. And honestly, I had more rooms than I actually needed. But honestly, just having your own space was one of the most awesomest things ever. Until, well, I guess things got a little exciting. Because I remember when I got my own place, I ended up posting online about it and showing it off. And actually, I always do it till this day. And I remember back then, having my own place was one of the most insane things to a lot of people that I went to high school with. Because they all ended up reaching out to me saying, yo, Bubba, like you have your own place? Like, no way. Like, wait, Bubba, you live there? Like, is that actually all yours? And honestly, it was a major flex to say yes. Cause I think like at this time I was only like, what, 19 turning 20 and having your own place at that age is very not common, especially knowing how much school debt is nowadays. So I remember I was like super excited. And a lot of people were DMing me. And it honestly, it got to the point where literally the first like two weeks of like me having that place, a lot of people. And I mean, a lot of girls, especially would always end up coming over. And I think you guys know, cause I've told many stories about all the chicks I've done but basically all these girls that would come over let's just say most of the time they ended up staying the night and we did the duvel's tango now here's the part about apartments that really suck because they're not soundproof okay the walls aren't soundproof nor are they super concealing so anytime i would do the duvel's tango let's just say my neighbors would end up hearing like a really loud like 
clap sound. I'm not going to say what it was, but let's just say if you're old enough, you'll understand. And basically, I remember it got to the point where my landlord ended up messaging me on my phone saying, hey, um, so you've been getting a lot of noise complaints recently in the building. Is there a reason for that? And I kept telling them no, like, no, nothing's going on. No, nothing's happening because I didn't want to like get in trouble. But then out of nowhere, one of the days later on, I ended up getting a knock on the door and I got this knock on the door as I was in the middle of filming. So I ended up pausing my recording. I ended up standing up and going to the door and seeing who it was. And when I opened it, I saw it was like a really hot, like super attractive lady. And I didn't really know who she exactly was. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. How do you not know what your landlord looks like? Well, you got to understand. I ended up getting the place through a realtor, which is like the person that like is connected to the landlord. I don't know if that really makes sense to y'all, but it makes somewhat sense to me. But going on with the story, I remember I ended up seeing this woman and she ended up walking in saying, oh, like, hi, um, you must be Bubba, right? Uh, yeah. Who are you? Oh, I'm your landlord. At that moment, I ended up wiping off the grin on my face and having like a serious face because I could not be like, you know, looking dumb in front of this woman because I basically live under her roof, technically speaking. So I remember she ended up walking into the place. She ended up like, you know, talking about herself a bit and how like she got into like, you know, owning property and, you know, just basically a bunch of yapping about adult stuff that I really did not care about back then because I was 19. Like I could care less. And then that's when she looked at me and said, wait, so do you live here all by yourself? Uh, yeah, that's what it says on the paperwork. Interesting. So like, what do you do? What do I do? Yeah, because well, it's not really common for people your age to like, you know, be moving out. So I'm just curious, like what got you to this point? At that moment, me and her, we ended up sitting on my couch that I had in the apartment. And I basically kind of like told her like basically how I ended up like, you know, growing on the internet, thanks to you guys. And how basically like, you know, I make videos for a living. I remember she looks at me questioning what in the world I was talking about until she looked over at my gaming setup and saw the YouTube awards that I had on the wall. And that's when she was in massive shock because she looked at me and said, wait, so you're like a full on like internet celebrity living under my roof? Uh, well, kind of. Yeah, I guess is what I told her. And then that's when she had more questions to ask. And she sat down talking to me and stuff. And then that's when she finally ended up bringing up the noise complaints. When she brought up the noise complaints, I ended up telling her how like I get super loud when I record and stream online. And you know, it probably ends up annoying the neighbors and how I'll try to keep it down. She ended up being thankful. And then actually funny enough, right before she left, she told me, oh, so I like, I was wondering, can I like come over again? Like maybe we can like talk more. Cause I'm actually like more curious about this internet stuff. Uh, yeah, sure. Just come over whenever is what I told her. And then that's when she ended up leaving my apartment. No, I'm not going to lie. She was a super hot landlord, but there was no way in hell I was going to do anything with this woman because I don't want to get in trouble and ruin the relationship I have with her to the point where she could basically kick me out. So I remember from there, I decided to basically like keep things low key and not message her nothing. But I'm not going to lie to you. This landlord right after she left, she ended up messaging me back to back to back, not as my landlord, but as like a friend, which was kind of mind blowing. But she kept asking me more questions. She ended up asking me about my life more. And honestly, she was super interested in me to the point where I remember I ended up having to ghost her. Yeah, I ended up ghosting my own landlord. Like I still paid her obviously every month for the place, but I ended up ghosting her and not talking to her until I want to say one month later. I remember she ended up basically one day randomly appearing, knocking on the door of my apartment. I ended up opening it. And when I saw it was her, I ended up saying, oh, hey, like it's been so long. How you been? And that's when she ended up storming into my apartment. And she said, but like, I don't understand. Like, like being like an adult is so hard. And like, honestly, like, I don't understand how you have it so easy in life where you just get to do whatever you want. And like, honestly, like, like, I don't know. I'm going to be honest here. She was just yapping and complaining a bunch. I didn't really know what about, but she was just basically having a midlife crisis where I'm not going to lie. It kind of scared me because she seemed crazy. But going on with the story, I remember I ended up telling her to sit down on the couch. I ended up getting her a glass of water and I told her to just run it down. Like what was going on? And she ended up telling me how, like, basically like how hard it is to own property because someone always complaints and stuff and basically all this like weird garbage that I really just did not care about. But then I think this is the part of the story where things got really insane because I remember after she finished complaining, she got closer and closer to me to the point where I'm not going to lie. She looked like she was about to kiss me. So that's when I ended up standing up from the couch because once again, I didn't want to do anything with my landlord and I ended up basically walking around her and I told her how like, you know, maybe like take a break for a minute, go on vacation, just do anything so that you don't have to be near me because dealing with her was the last thing I wanted to do. From there, I remember she ended up standing up and going to the bathroom. And after she went to the bathroom, she came out and said, Baba, this maybe seems personal, but are you single? Uh, yeah, I live here by myself and I'm single. Okay, that's good. Cause honestly, like I need you to follow me. There's something I need to tell you. Uh, sure. At this point, I thought she was going to tell me something about like the roofing or like the plumbing in like a certain room. But then when she took me into my bedroom, she ended up basically pushing me onto the bed. And while one thing led to another, I'm not going to lie to you. Me and her, we ended up doing the devil's tango. Now I'm not going to lie. She was
was super hot, so I wasn't complaining. But honestly, I gotta say, this was one of my biggest mistakes because I remember right after we finished, she ended up laying beside me saying, oh, honestly, like, I'm not gonna lie. This apartment gives me a lot of memories and I think I might move back in. Wait, what? I, I live here though. Yeah, you can still live here if you want. At that moment, I ended up basically putting in my notice for wanting to leave. Luckily, I didn't sound like a full-on like year contract or anything. And uh, yeah, I ended up moving out and moving to a different apartment in the same building, funny enough, but I moved into a different apartment and I ended up basically living in the same building as my old landlord. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. She became a sneaky link, but hey, would you guys do it with your landlord? Because if you guys wouldn't, then just fall for more embarrassing stories just like this one. Peace out, guys. And when I looked at my friend's roommate, she looked at me saying, Bubba, come to my room. And I knew I was in big trouble. Yo, what is going on, you guys? My name's Bubba, and welcome back to a super embarrassing, but I gotta say crazy story. So this story takes place after high school, after my grade 12 year. I was actually 19 around this time, and I remember being 19, I really did not know what I was doing because I didn't enroll in college, I didn't do university. In reality, I did not know what my future really held for me. But thanks to you guys following the channel, honestly, you guys actually changed my life. But before this, when I was 19, I remember I had this one friend of mine that was really, well, how do I put this? Awkward. Because I remember after high school, me and him, we never really connected with anyone at all. So basically, when we saw each other one time at the mall, we ended up walking up to each other and seeing how life was going. It's actually really cool after high school when you meet up with someone again or see someone that you went to high school with because it's a different experience since you guys are in, well, a harder place and that's figuring out your future. But I remember I walked up to him and said, hey, yo, didn't you go to my school? Oh, yeah. What's up, Bubba? Good to see you, bro. Yeah. Oh, uh, so what's up with you? Oh, nothing. You know, just going to school for fashion, you know, just figuring out my stuff. Oh, okay. I didn't know you liked fashion. Now, you guys are probably wondering why I was really awkwarded out and asking weird questions that really made no sense. And that's because this guy started to act more zesty than what he used to back when we were in school. Until I realized one thing led to another, he actually ended up coming out as gay after high school. Now, obviously, this was my first time seeing his gay side come out, I guess. And obviously, I wanted to respect Expected, so I remember I was just being nice to him and interacting with him and me and him We started talking about the future and stuff and you know how he has a plan to become a fashion designer and all this cool stuff And when he asked me about my future, well, I ended up just standing there frozen not knowing what to say I remember he looks at me saying, oh, it's okay, Bubba. Don't worry. Not everyone figures out their future Uh, yeah, I guess I don't know is what I told him afterwards and I remember one thing led to another He actually ended up giving me his number. And no, not in that way Just giving me his number as a friend now I remember after that whole conversation I ended up walking through the mall going straight straight to, you know, a technology store and just buying some tech that I wanted just because why not? Because obviously at the time I was still building my dream gaming setup and everything. And then out of nowhere, I remember one thing led to another. I ended up getting a text message. I got a text message from him saying, hey, actually, I was just wondering tonight. I'm having like kind of like a friend gathering from like people from high school. Do you want to come? At that moment, I didn't really know what to say. I was thinking, yes, no, maybe. But at the same time, I ended up texting him back saying, wait, so is it like at your parents place? Oh, no, I moved out a long time ago. I live with my roommate. Uh, she's totally chill. Don't worry. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll come over. And one thing led to another. He sent me the address and well, later on that night, I ended up going over. I remember I ended up driving my car there, parked my car across the street from his building and I got on my vehicle and started heading inside. And when I got there, I remember I ended up seeing someone else at the front door of the building smoking. And it was actually an old friend of mine from high school. Well, friend not actually a friend but we knew each other i remember i walked up to him and shook his hand i'm like hey like how's it going it's been a minute oh it's good bro good to see you man so like you're coming upstairs uh yeah i i don't know i ran into him and i thought you know why not hang out with him again i guess yeah no apparently like a lot of people are going to this thing bro wait did you ever meet his roommate uh no why is his roommate cool or something oh bro you're in for a treat i remember me and him we ended up entering the building together so he could show me where to go and when we walked through the doors i remember i ended up seeing a lot of people there that were from my high school now, obviously, it was super awkward to see a lot of them. And to be honest, not a lot of them liked me since chances were that I did the devil's tango with their friend. But one thing led to another. I remember I ended up getting some pretty, well, evil eyes pointed at me. But not only that, I ended up seeing one girl that was at the gathering. Now, this girl, I did not recognize whatsoever. But I remember I looked at her and I'm like, whoa, this girl is a 10 out of 10. And then I remember my friend that came up to me that was gay ended up coming up behind me, putting his hand on my shoulder and saying, oh, I see you met my roommate. Yeah, she's super cool. Yeah. 
yeah cool roommate bro you guys just like share this place yeah she's like super neat you should go meet her and one thing led to another i ended up walking up with him to this girl and he introduced me i remember when i met this girl i couldn't stop staring at her cherries because i'm not gonna lie they were popping out of that dress of whatever she was wearing and one thing led to another every time this woman spoke to me i really did not understand anything she was saying because i was just way too distracted but obviously i think this chick knew that i was definitely distracted and she kept basically like running her mouth about something about you know i guess school and stuff and how it's cool that you know we're all gathering together and we should do this more and when i heard hang out more at that point i remember i looked up at her looking her right in the eyes and saying oh yeah like i'm down to hang out if you want i remember she looks confused at me and she says oh wait you mean like me and you i mean yeah why not like do you not want to hang out more i mean i just met you yeah i know but like what we all went to the same high school like you know if i ended up being a bad guy why would i be here that's true my roommate really does have good taste in boys right yeah that's exactly what i meant i remember at that point me and her just started laughing we ended up hanging out more and one thing led to another i'm not gonna lie to you we ended up exchanging social media accounts but right as things were getting really good i gotta say obviously all good things must come to an end because out of nowhere i remember halfway through the party i ended up just you know walking around and stuff and hanging out with friends and then out of nowhere i ended up seeing that one of the girls started talking to the chick that i just got her number off of i remember i saw that she was like pointing me out and stuff and i guess you know telling her something that was about me and i got really worried and confused because obviously i didn't want this girl have a bad taste in her mouth all because she heard something from someone else for some reason all girls like to talk smack about guys that have a bad history even though i did not know that chick at all as well but going on with the story i remember when i saw this i was really confused and stuff so i kind of just ended up letting it go and just you know basically tried to ignore it and after the whole event happened i remember i ended up going home and i decided to shoot this girl a text message about you know when we should hang out next i remember i texted her and she ended up replying back instantly saying oh actually do you want to maybe like go to a cafe tomorrow uh yeah sure which cafe oh like the one just downstairs from my building uh i'll meet you there at, like what 4 30 uh yeah sure i'll make it and that's when we made a plan to see each other now obviously since i was 19 i was really excited to like you know actually go on a date instead of just have a girl come over and just do the devil's tango but then i remember the next day when I actually went to this cafe, I saw her sitting there by herself and I walked in and basically met up with her. I remember she ended up looking at me and she said, oh, Bubba, I was wondering, can we talk about something real quick? Uh, yeah, what's up? Me and her, we sat down at the booth and I remember she ended up explaining something to me that actually kind of blew my mind. But she said, so your friend, I guess last night, I don't know if you know that chick that was talking to me. Uh, I don't know her, but like I've seen her. Wait, what about her? Well, she told me that like you did a lot of the devil's tango throughout high school. Is that true? Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I was like a major player, but I'm considering retirement. <laughs> Did you just say retirement? Are you serious? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of tired of being a player. When I said that, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was totally lying, by the way. There was no way I was just gonna, you know, go into retirement or give it all up because obviously, like, I wanted to have fun throughout my 20s and I still do. I remember when I said that, though, she ended up having a smile turn into kind of like a curious and questioning face because she ended up saying, wait, so are you not like looking for a, like, you know, friends with benefits? Well, I mean, like, I'm never not down for friends with benefits. Okay, well, let's go upstairs and see what you can do. I remember I was confused because the cafe only had one floor. But when she meant upstairs, I started to realize that she actually meant her apartment. Now, I remember at this moment, I was really worried because I didn't want her roommate to see me there with her. But obviously, I did not know what to do. So as me and her were walking up to her apartment, I remember I looked at her and said, I have a question. Is your roommate there? Because I don't want to make things weird between me and him. Like, we just reconnected. Oh, I don't think he's up there. I'm not sure. You know what? Here, stay out here. I'll quickly go check. I remember she went upstairs and checked if her roommate was there. And apparently he wasn't since I got a message literally two seconds later saying that he was gone. At that point, I remember I went upstairs with her and me and her, we chilled in the living room for a bit and started talking about life and, you know, who I was really in high school and basically told her some of the stories that I tell on this channel nowadays. And one thing led to another. I remember as me and her were about to get up and just go to her bedroom, out of nowhere, I ended up seeing her roommate walk in with one of my homies from back in high school and they were making out now i've never seen guy on guy action before in my life right in front of me until this day and i remember i looked at the guy that he brought home and i was like wait a minute he's gay at this moment it was a really awkward situation because obviously i guess he didn't want his secret going out that he was gay and obviously i wanted to respect that so me i kept it low key as long as he kept me and his roommate low key and at that moment after that whole awkward interaction i remember i ended up seeing the girl that was there and she told me to basically like go into her room and well when i 
I went into her room. I bet you guys know what happened. Me and her, we ended up doing the Duvel's Tango. And I'm not gonna lie, it was one of the most awkward experiences I ever experienced because let's just say we weren't the only ones doing the Duvel's Tango in that apartment. I know it sounds crazy to say, but hey, it is what it is. But if you guys don't want this really awkward interaction to happen with you guys, then just fall for more embarrassing stories just like this one. Peace out, guys.